Now, values are the same as criteria. In NLP, yeah, we talk about highly valued criteria or criteria, and criteria is another word for values. So there are a few different ways to teach this. So we are going to ditch the word and reorganize it. Criteria is too jargonistic, and the rest of the world talks in terms of values. So what we're talking about is values. If somebody in NLP says the criteria ladder, this is criteria. This is just another way of saying values hierarchy. Same thing, right? Now, values are a rather new concept in the NLP community. Very few schools even talk about values. They may have talked about criteria. They talked about criteria for purchasing things or criteria for doing a specific thing. But they never talk about life values or areas of life values. So the work we're learning here is state of the art in neuro-linguistic programming. And I continue to work on this. And we're going to give you information during this segment, which is right up to date in terms of this year. So now let's define values. Values are what's important to us. That's a question on your test. That's, by the way, the simple answer. You can fill in that if you want. Values create our motivation before we do anything. But also, they determine behavior based on what we're motivated to do and what we do with our time. Because I would venture to say, just between you and me, I would venture to say that even if you hate something, if you're motivated to do it, it's important to you. My favorite example is the guy who says, well, you know what, I hate paperwork. And I'll say to him, but do you do it? And he goes, yeah. And I say, why? He says, because it's important. So values are not necessarily what you like. They're what's important to you. Highly valued criteria are the most important values. Now, values are what we move away from or what we move toward. Like I said, the guy that hates the paperwork, right? He's moving away from it. But what's he moving away from? He's probably moving away from whatever that unconscious part of him side is hating. Whether it's disorganization, or hating not having the permits done so HR doesn't breathe down his neck, or whatever, right? Yeah? And together with metaprograms, they are part of the most unconscious filters. These are the things that we're willing to expend resources for. They tell us how we judge what we've done after we've done a certain behavior or something. They tell us how we judge good or bad, appropriateness or inappropriateness, right and wrong. They are the things that we obtain resources for. And in terms of filters, if you look at the NLP communication model, Metaprograms and values are one of the filters. Metaprograms are content-free filters. They're filters that filter our experience, but they're free of content. Whereas values are filters which have content, and yet they filter our experience. Now, if we're totally congruent with our values, that means they're in alignment with our values. Our objectives and goals will be extremely easy to achieve. The problem is that there is a lot of incongruity. There is a lot of common conflict among the values in a value hierarchy. Away from, in this case, would constitute a conflict between what you want and what you don't want. And there could be also conflicts between values, which would include parts, yeah? So we'll talk about all of that. There are values that are generalizations about deep belief systems. They are normally nominalizations. Now, let me give you an example of a value that isn't a nominalization. A value that isn't a nominalization is a word like communication. It's the process of communicating. And you say, communication is very important to me. It's a process word of communicating, and you say, communication is very important to me. A nominalization is a word that acts like a noun. So, communication is very important to me 
relationship is very important to me. And someone might say, those are both nominalizations. But here's a value that's not a nominalization. And yet it is in this function. Money. She said, what's important to you about work? And the client goes, well, this, 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 and this, and this, and making money. So money becomes, in this case, important to the person, and money becomes a nominalization. And it's not per se because you can take money and put it in the wheelbarrow. That's the test for nominalization. Yet, money is a nominalization. And it's a nominalization of work. So, money is a nominalization that represents the energy of work. And yet, it is possible for a person to have money in their values hierarchy. It's especially important for certain people in terms of their values to make money. Other people aren't even motivated by it at all. So values are generalizations about deep belief systems. And they're usually nominalizations. They govern all of human behavior and serve as evaluation criteria for all our actions. So they serve as an evaluation filter, yeah? And the how they serve as an evaluation filter is were the actions that I did Were they good or bad, right or wrong? Did I like them or don't like them? This or that. That's how values serve as an evaluation filter. Now, highly valued criteria are also values. They are our most important values. Values themselves are not what you think per se, but they're how you think. So values are less about content And they're more about process, although values themselves are not content-free filters. They contain some content. Values, however, are substantially more abstract than beliefs. For two reasons. One is they have a higher degree of abstraction in terms of the word itself, plus they're shorter. And a shorter word rather than a single sentence is going to be abstract. Values are more unconscious than beliefs. Now, beliefs, so inside ourselves, we know that we have certain beliefs. Those convictions that we have about things that are true. They're things that we either can or cannot do. They determine how to perform our actions. And they determine how we perform through values. Beliefs are either empowering or disempowering. For most people, beliefs provide a rule structure as to how we relate to certain events. Now, if we take values and beliefs and we lump them together, we get attitude. And attitudes are collections of beliefs and values around a certain system. Attitudes are more conscious. You're conscious of your attitude generally, right? Most people are totally unconscious about their values. Some people are somewhat conscious about their values, but, but only when they've done values work. Our core beliefs and our values are those values and beliefs that are important for our personality. Core values, those are deep, right? And some people in NLP talk about core values or core criteria. And again, those are just our deepest values. Values and belief systems are just collections. So, in your manual, in section 3, page 2, there's a diagram that will help you see values and belief collections and how they are coded. The beliefs are clustered around values. Now, you can imagine what happens if you take out a value, right? All the values around the value disappear. So if you make the value unimportant, what do you think happens to the beliefs? Yeah, they become unimportant. They're there, but they're not important. How much leverage is that, right? Because how many beliefs do you think are around a certain value? Lots. So if you can work with values, you can actually move through belief systems very, very quickly. You can use timeline therapy to get rid of a value, 
but a basic submodality shift is substantially quicker. And I'm going to show you how to do that. In fact, values are the easiest set of submodalities to change. This will shock you, right? And it shocked me when I first figured it out. They're the easiest set of submodalities to change, easier than mapping across and easier than that. So if you take out a value, you can take out a bunch of beliefs with it. So a value acts as the controlling element for each belief that you have. Now, there are some people in NLP that have done a lot of work with beliefs, right? And a lot of NLP practitioners still teach an old textbook way of changing beliefs with an old four-step belief process, which changes beliefs with submodalities. And it's a four-step belief process when you take the belief that is true and you make it a belief that is no longer true, and then you take a belief that is totally true and you make a new belief into that. It's a super long process. It's substantially quicker to just get rid of it with timeline therapy by getting rid of a limiting decision. So that's what we do now. And just so you know, it's substantially quicker to work with values directly rather than working through beliefs or rather than using timeline therapy for them. The work with values is exponents faster. This will give you substantially more leverage to work with values because values are more abstract than beliefs. The more abstract the change, the greater the change.